like to start off with a with a sort of statement because there was a rumor going around in the press office that you didn't really want to talk about your background, and then of course you're, you're that is you wanted to focus more on the math. Um, Not really. I, I don't know how the <laughs> rumor started. <laughs> yeah, last year I gave a talk here uh, at the HLF, and it was all about mathematics, just the technical side of mathematics. And this this year I, I decided to do it a little bit different, maybe make it a bit more personal, and also a bit more entertaining. Because I think if all the talks are technical, then maybe people get tired. But if once in a while we have something more entertaining, just a bit lighter, then that also helps. Um, and also these kind of general talks relate to more people, I think, than a technical talk. I think everyone in the audience probably found something that they could relate to in my story. So there hasn't been a change of your attitude as far as um, you know what you what you want to talk about. No, not really. I just try to do it in in different ways. I mean, I, I gave a similar talk in China just a few weeks ago, and so I changed some of the content and some of the the pictures. Um, but I just try uh, to to make it better and better, and maybe give similar talks in other places, just to have a diversity of the kind of thing that I want to talk about. If I repeat the same thing all the time, then it gets boring. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad uh, uh, asking you some of the questions that I've heard you talk about for the last couple of days. Um, but let's start off with the most obvious thing, um, why you got the award and, um, and how that happened and what happened before and after. And yeah, I think this is the hardest part. <laughs> really? <laughs> to, I mean, to explain why I, I got a medal. Um, so my work is in algebraic geometry, uh, specifically in the field of birational geometry. It is like you could say the heart, in a way, of algebraic geometry because it has classical roots. Its problems are, in a way, inspired by problems that people maybe even could understand a hundred years ago or, or more. Um, uh, so I work in this field, and, and right from the beginning when I started, when I did my PhD thesis, um, I felt that there is a program here, not just a one or two isolated problems. And I really liked this feature of the field. Um, so I had many problems to work on, and I also tried to understand the connection between these, these uh, problems. Um, so. The work that, that led to the field medal specifically, it, I think it was mostly for two pieces of work. One was a joint work with uh, Haken, McKernan, and Cascini. Um, we studied uh, the minimal model program for varieties of general type, and we settled several quite important and historical uh, problems. And also the second work was much later, a, a decade later, and that was about um, a structure of final varieties, which naturally appear in many parts of uh, algebraic geometry. Do you have a, a, an, any idea why, why you were able to, why you and your colleagues were able to, to solve these problems when others weren't? Um, yeah, I mean, this question, of course, comes up all the time. When I mean, when I work, sometimes I say, I pick a problem, and I think about it. I could ask the same question: Why should I do, and maybe not other people? In fact, I remember when I just finished my PhD, I moved to Warwick University, and one of the colleagues uh, told me that. He told me, okay, explain what you are doing. When I told him that I'm working on this and that problem, and he told me exactly that. Why do you think you can solve this problem when these big guys didn't solve it before you? Um, I think there are, there are a couple of points here. One thing is that uh, young people should not be afraid of approaching really uh, famous or really difficult problems. And the thing is that sometime in a field there is progress over the years. There are uh, new ideas coming in. Maybe those old guys didn't have access to this new technology. And this new technology can be the key to solving these, these problems. So in, I think young people should not be afraid of just going for the, for the big, um, big problems in a sensible way, of course. They have to make sure that they can do something and they get a job and so on. Now, as I think you know, I'm not a mathematician, so I, I probably won't understand your answer, but perhaps the, the viewers will. Um, are you working on any problems now that, that are especially interesting or, or difficult? Yeah, at the moment I have been, in the last um, couple of years, I have been thinking about um, uh, and something called uh, Kalabi Yao. 
and a more general version of that, which is a log Calabiao. And the nice thing about it, this is that it unifies many central notions in the field. And you can pose many interesting questions about these local labial uh, structures. In my case, I'm more interested in their uh, boundedness, in their singularities, in their linear systems. Um, but uh, it specializes to many different questions. And I have been trying to understand uh, this. Especially, I have been trying to use also the techniques developed uh, to, uh, to approach final varieties and to study these more general local labial structures. When I've talked with mathematicians before, some of them will split the way that they work or the way that mathematicians in general work into two groups, those who work alone and those who are social mathematicians. Uh, which would you say you are? I, if there is a dichotomy, I don't mean to impose yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, up to a certain degree. I think I'm more le going in the direction of working alone, but not like completely alone. And what happens is that I usually, when I work in Cambridge, I do it alone. Sometimes I don't even go to office. Quite often I just work at home, so I don't interact too much with, with many people. Uh, but on the other hand, I also travel a lot. I meet a lot of people uh, outside Cambridge whose work is relevant to, to mine. So I, maybe I could say that much of my work is done alone, but also I have quite a few papers with other people. You mentioned the first uh, breakthrough that you had was with two other uh, researchers. Three uh, others. Three others, three I'm sorry. Others. Uh, what was the progression of that problem? Yeah, that was a bit. <laughs> uh, I mean, you, you never know how collaborations start and how they, they progress. Uh, it can be for many reasons. Sometimes people just from the beginning, uh, they pick a problem and say, OK, let's think about this problem. And sometimes it actually happens by accident. So in, in this case, for example, uh, those other three people, they were working on something. And I was working on these things also, similar things alone. And then at some point, we realized by accident, basically, that we were thinking about similar things. And then we decided just to join forces and to do it um, all together. And it turned out to be great for everyone, I think. It's funny to hear that you work uh, alone as a mathematician, just in light of your talk this morning, in which you, you emphasize the value of community and culture, you know, of, of, of social living, I suppose. Um, how do you feel that works out in, in the mathematical world in general? Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's not a contradiction. The thing is, uh, to do deep mathematics, you also need time on your own. I mean, there are people who continuously interact with other people. They talk and they prove uh, great things. But at least for me, that just doesn't work. If I talk all the time, if I have, if I'm in office and every uh, one hour, I don't know, every day two, three people come and knock on my door, I think I can't just focus. I can't concentrate. But there are people who can. So there are just different type of uh, mathematicians. But you, you need communication always. It doesn't have to be always in a personal setting. You can email people. You, anyway, we have to travel or uh, attend conferences, present our work. So there is communication all the time. But it doesn't have to be on a daily basis. It doesn't have to be face to face. Um, but also, doing mathematics is only one aspect of life. We need this social support, social structure also outside work. Well, talk a little bit about that, if you would, um, because you, you went into it in, in, in such eloquent detail this morning about how your own cultural background you know, has supported you. Yeah, I, I think cultures are the most important, in a way, aspect of hum humanity. So when I say culture, that includes everything, including even mathematics and, and science. Um, for me, I think humans are like hardware, like computers. And then cultures are like software. <laughs> so to operate normally in a, in a healthy, efficient way, I think you need a good software. And also, it's, it's understood that if you have many different options for software, uh, then it's better than if you have just one option. So I think a diversity of cultures is really uh, important. I, it really saddened me when I here, when I read that so many languages, so many cultures just disappear for 
really for reasons that are motivated by politics or just by business and, and, and so on. Because I think these are the, really the, the things that can help hu humanity, maybe, maybe not now, but maybe 100 years later, maybe 200 years later. It's difficult to predict how humans will evolve. So even if some cultures are now are not very technologically advanced, they can be the key to human survival 500 years later. And in general, I think cultures are exactly what makes people, um, that people can make sense of their lives and also their um, happiness. Because one thing is rarely discussed, even when I attend sometime health-related workshops, for example, people rarely mention mental health. But I think that's really a very important component of, 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 of people to be healthy. You just need mental support. And that's unfortunately quite often forgotten, maybe because it's hard to measure what happiness means. And also, I, I think there are also other reasons for that. But uh, I, I take it very serious. You did make a somewhat shocking statement this morning, or perhaps just to me, that that uh, your your time in war-torn Iran, in some ways, was happier than what you see around you. It, it came, or it, you know, the, the environment was there was more happiness. Or how did you put it? Or how would you put it? I think at that time, even there was war. I could see many people joking around all the time. Even they, I just didn't feel that they were suffering. There were suffering, of course. People died. Um, for example, in, in my extended family, several people died because of the war, but in my immediate family, no one actually died. So, in a way, I, I was lucky. Um, but overall, when you looked at the whole society, I think people were happier, even though it was such a difficult time and also very uncertain what would happen in the future. But I think that all has to do with, with, with the culture, with the lifestyle, with how people view the world. Uh, just daily life, how people talk, how people interact, I think these are all, all important. And it can make a huge difference when you go from one place to another place. Uh, but unfortunately, these days, maybe especially in the West, the emphasis on work is so much that people tend to forget that you actually, to be happy, work is just one part, one aspect. You also need other things to be happy. And you compared that time to specifically to Cambridge? Yes, because I lived in Cambridge for a long time. Uh, the thing what I see in Cambridge, for example, is a lot of people are stressful because they have to work, they have to compete maybe. And um, some people maybe they don't have the social support, the social structure, maybe they don't have a, a strong family bond. And just if you are in trouble and no one is there to take care of you, no one is there to support you, I think that is one of the worst kind of suffering for human rather than physical suffering. Mm. Mm. So changing the topic a little bit, um, how have things been since you received the Fields Medal? How has your life changed? Yeah, in, in many ways, of course, it's great. It's such a great honor to get this prize. Um, in practical terms, I think maybe it has made me more busy than before. <laughs> It's just because more people approach me and then there is more requests, more um, demands. Um, of course, I'm very happy if I can be of help to anyone. Uh, but these things also take time. That's also a, a reality. So it's the truth that. Um, but in the end of the day, it, it's up to me, I guess, how to manage my time, how much spend on research, how much spend on maybe other activities. Uh, but I'm still trying to figure out how to make a balance between my own work and also trying to help other people. And what is your title at Cambridge now? It's the same as before, oh, okay. professor of mathematics. And has your workload changed there with the balance? Mm, well, I... Yeah, until now it's, it was the same, but from now, from this October, I don't have to teach for a few years. So that, hmm. that's probably the only difference. Hmm. Is there, uh, and of course, one of your obligations, or one of the things you've chosen to do has been the Heidelberg Laureate Forum, which, you know, for which we're all grateful. Um, how, is, how has this been for you? Do you have any, any insights on what people you've talked to or what you've seen? Yeah, I think it's great because I can talk to people from different 
subjects. It is mainly c computer science and mathematics, but there are also people from physics. And already math and computer science is a huge um, area, and just talking to these people, listening to the talks from different areas is, is really interesting. But also there are 200 young researchers from all over the world. And I really like just to interact with all these people from different countries, from different cultures. I think this is probably the most culturally diverse meeting I have ever been. I mean, if you compare to a, just a normal mathematics uh, conference, you, you see people from many different countries, but it's usually a restricted number of countries. But here, a lot of countries are represented, which is really great. Hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Nothing specifically, but I just hope that this, um, the, the way that the, the program is structured will continue and hopefully more mathematicians also attend this meeting. Because this year we have very few, just four people. Mm. I mean on the senior level, of, on the laureates. Well, thank you very much. I can't think of anything else. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Mm.